So today I'm going to show you two servers in AWS. One is running ASCS, the other is running ERS. We're going to inject a kernel failure into the ASCS server. It's going to go down. The secondary server is automatically going to take over and start running the ASCS process. And then when the server that failed comes back up, ERS is going to automatically move from the currently active server to the one that failed as it comes back up in order to maintain SAP best practices. Hi, welcome to TFR Let's See. And today we have with us Todd Doan, Solutions Architect at Sayus Technology. And today we are going to talk about configuring SAP S for HANA for high availability. Of course, we'll talk about it. And we're also going to see a demo of it in action. Thank you. I uh, really appreciate you having me back. Let's talk about some basics. It may not always be clear how to build a high availability SAP infrastructure. Can you tell us what options are available to users? There are really three options uh, for high availability in the SAP infrastructure. Um, you've got Red Hat Enterprise Linux high availability add-on and SUSE high availability extension, um, and SIOS LifeKeeper protection suite. Um, both Red Hat and SUSE are integrations of Pacemaker, um, and SIOS is its own uh, custom clustering software. The SIOS big advantage is simplicity and ease of use. Um, Pacemaker is going to require you to build a lot of custom scripts to manage failover, with SIOS, we have wizards to configure the HA environment, which saves a great deal of time. Um, SIOS protection suite is SAP certified, handles the data replication at the application level for your ASCS and ERS volumes. Um, and SIOS handles database re-registration um, and can do manual or automatic switchback when a source comes back online. Um, there are a ton of manual tasks um, when it comes to Pacemaker. Now, it may look like that building high availability, disaster recovery in SAP HANA environments can be complicated, can be complex. Is it really complex? And if it is, what leads to that complexity? SAP HANA environments are incredibly complex, um, especially when you want to do uh, HA and DR. Um, they're so complex because you're dealing with multiple applications at uh, different layers of the application stack. Um, so you've got your uh, presentation layer, which is easily protected, um, you know, your Windows uh, servers. And then you've got the application layer um, in the middle, which is where ASCS and ERS reside. Um, and those need to be running on different servers, uh, you know, for SAP best practices. Um, so if you have a failure, you need ERS of the ASCS node, you need to move the ERS to another node. Um, and just anticipating all the places that there can be failover. Um, you also have the integration with the database, um, you've got things like uh, takeover with Handshake for maintenance of the database. Um, just an absolute ton going on in the SAP uh, environment at any point in time so that when you have a failure, um, being able to automate the failover um, and minimize your RTO and your RPO, um, it, it's just incredibly complex and difficult. Can you share with us some tips, some strategies, how to simplify this, how to simplify your SAP HANA environment to ensure business continuity? Yeah, so the best strategy is really to identify, plan, train, and test. Um, you need to identify, you know, all the places that you could possibly have a failover, which could be environmental, um, human error, uh, hardware failure, you know, software failure, power failure. Um, there's just a number of um, places that you can have, uh, you know, a, a failure or a glitch. So being able to identify 
you know, as many possible uh, potential places of failure as you can, um, you know, and then plan to make sure that there are no single points of failure. Um, and then train, um, you know, all the people uh, responsible for supporting and keeping that SAP HANA environment up um, and, and working and available. Um, and then test. Uh, that's where, you know, many companies really struggle is to be able to uh, test the failover, test different types of uh, failures within their system. And, you know, to make sure that, uh, you know, when a hurricane does come um, and takes your data center out that you're uh, ready for it and that your um, high availability and DR uh, systems actually work the way you expect them to. I also want to talk about the cultural aspect of high availability disaster recovery in SAP HANA environment. Talk a bit about how SIOS tools kind of build that culture and how right culture can help teams get most out of these tools. Yeah, so the the real culture caused by um, providing high availability for SAP and HANA um, stems from the fact that it's SAP has done such an excellent job of providing you um, you know, scripts, uh, ways to monitor the database, the application, um, and, you know, functions that you can call to determine the health, um, fail the system over. And they've got all of these building blocks, but they're no real uh, packaged way to implement all of those building blocks and functions that SAP is, has given you um, to easily create this high availability infrastructure um, unless you custom build scripts with Pacemaker, um, whether it's the SUSE or the Red Hat implementation. Um, and then you've got to interpret and account for all of the SAP best practices. Um, what SIOS has done is we've gone ahead and done all that work for you um, so that we can, uh, you can easily implement this high availability infrastructure um, when there's upgrades or changes to uh, SAP. Um, we've already handled, you know, any changes required uh, in our software where, um, you know, an upgrade to SAP or to Red Hat uh, may change the pacemaker implementation and what you have to do um, to make sure that you maintain high availability uh, and keep those SAP best practices. And now it's time for a demo. Before we start a demo, tell us what are you going to show us today and then let's see it in action. So today I'm going to show you two servers in AWS um, and one is running ASCS, the other's running ERS. We're going to inject a kernel failure into the ASCS server. It's going to go down. Uh, the secondary server is automatically going to take over and uh, start running the ASCS process. And then when the server that failed comes back up, ERS is going to automatically move from the currently active server to the one that failed as it comes back up in order to maintain SAP best practices. Perfect, now it's time to see it in action. Okay, so here we have uh, the two servers in AWS, um, SAP Demo ABAP1 and SAP Demo ABAP2. And I'm gonna go over here. What we have is the LifeKeeper GUI. So uh, here you can see I've got a two node cluster. Um, there is a witness on these, but the witness uh, is a storage witness uh, using an S3 bucket. Um, and that just prevents us from having uh, any um, split brain scenario. Uh, 
so if these two servers lost connectivity, the witness would ensure that um, they don't both run the same process at the same time. So now what I'm going to do, uh, and you can see the hierarchy here. So we have at the top of the hierarchy, we have ASCS, we have the IP address, which will move. Um, this is a virtual IP address uh, using the SIOS IP kit. Then we have the uh, EC2 IP address, which that basically um, is an object that will change the route table um, so that when the address moves, you can find the server um, in another uh, availability zone. Um, and then we've got the ASCS volume, which is being replicated. Um, so right now you can see the, the primary or the source is uh, ABAP1 for ASCS and the target is ABAP2. So this is a mirror. Uh, when we fail, um, this mirror will be the first thing to come up. Um, and, and any point in the any part of the hierarchy fails, the whole hierarchy will fail over to uh, the secondary server. Uh, ERS is running on the secondary server. You can see here that process is active. And we have, um, again, the, the ERS volume is now, uh, the source is on ABAP2, um, and that's being replicated over to um, the primary, or server one. Um, and you can see that they're synch synchronous mirrors and it's fully replicated at this point in time. Okay, so my next step here is we're gonna create a kernel panic in server one. And you can see that that panic ca has caused everything to go down on server one. So right now, um, hit refresh here. It takes a minute. Um, we've got to miss uh, the keep lives to recognize that it's gone down. And you can see that the uh, data volume here has now become the source, the mirror, for the ASCS volume on server two. And I'm running this GUI on server two so that we didn't um, <laughs> lose the GUI when if it was running on server one. Um, and so the volumes, uh, you know, it's showing out of sync to server one because it's down, but it'll reboot here shortly. And we're, everything's up, the IP address uh, is up. The only thing we're waiting for is the ASCS process to start. So that's start, started now, it's now active. Um, and that quickly, uh, we've failed server one and everything's up and running on server two. Now we have to wait a minute uh, for the server to reboot and it should be fairly quickly. So. So right now it's uh, coming back up. Uh, you can see here uh, it's already back up in standby mode, um, but the replicated disk is out of sync. So it'll take a few minutes to for that to sync up. And then there's a little bit of a wait period to make sure everything is healthy before the ERS process will start to move. So right now you can see that the um, ERS process has moved. Um, it's it started the move. Uh, we've already uh, moved the source um, of the ERS volume over to ABAP1. Um, and the volume's up. 
the IP address has moved over um, for the ERS process, uh, and now we're just starting the application uh, right now. So as these as we go up the hierarchy, um, the process everything starts at the bottom and goes up. So in just a minute or so, yep, there it goes. Now we're active on uh, server one. So by injecting that failure um, on server one, uh, we've effectively uh, moved AASCS, failed it over to uh, ABAP2, and then ERS, once ABAP1 became available, automatically uh, moved over. So we've reversed, um, you know, which process is which running on uh, each server. Um, here you'll see that the uh, disk is waiting to resync as we reverse the mirror direction. Um, it'll pause for a, a few minutes um, there. Now it's uh, restarted the synchronization process. And that's it. Um, really appreciate your time today. Uh, thank you very much, Swapno. Dot, thank you so much for excellent insights and a great demo there. I look forward to talk to you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.